Hello, my name is Andy Durrant from Race Technology and today's video is an introduction to the RT Live unit. So the RT Live is a brand new product for us, in fact it's a new product category and we're calling it an online data logger. So this is the, uh, the system as it's delivered to the customer, this is the, the main RT Live unit and if you're familiar with our products you'll recognise it as it looks very similar to the current DL1 range of products. So in fact they share the same enclosure on the back we have the same electrical connector for connection to analog sensors and power, uh, same GPS connector and they both have the same standard race technology data port on the front. However, the RT Live is a brand new unit and uh, completely new internals and new software and cool features and so on. So that's the main unit. As well as that, uh, it comes supplied with a standard race technology GPS antenna. This normally goes on the vehicle roof and connects to the, uh, the GPS connector on the rear here. But uniquely for the RT Live, it also comes supplied with a GSM, so a 3G GSM antenna. So this is a self-adhesive antenna, and this normally mounts on the inside of the rear windscreen to get a really good signal. And that connects to the second of the RF connectors on the back of the unit. Um, so the unit contains a, a GSM 3G radio modem internally, and it's that that allows the RT Live unit to communicate with the internet. Um, in addition, we've got a, um, a, a PC programming lead and, of course, power lead and so on. So that's the unit as it's delivered. Um, to explain the capabilities of the unit and what it's used for, we've set up a little bench demonstration. So I'll just put this stuff away. OK, so this is the RT Live unit running on the bench. So we have um, the standard RT Live unit here. Um, I've connected up a, a GPS antenna, which is in this case just outside the office window, just to get a good GPS lock. Um, this is the GSM antenna, so it's on the bench in this case. Um, it's a very good signal around here, so there's no issue with that. Uh, we've connected up power and a couple of analog signals to the RT Live unit, just for the demonstration. And finally, I've also connected a Dash 4 Pro data display. So you don't need a Dash 4 data display to operate the RT Live, and in many cases the RT Live will be used completely standalone in the car. But it does have our standard race technology data port on it, so it's compatible with all our other products. So for example, you can connect it to the Dash 4 Pro, or you could connect it to a Dash 2 Pro, or a Dash 2, or even a DL1. Um, and very commonly it will also be used with an ECU data interface. So it can be connected to your ECU. And any data that's output by any of the race technology devices, so from the dashboard or from the ECU, they go into the RT Live and all that data is available live on the internet, as well as all the internal data which it generates. So that can be from its selection of uh, built-in analog inputs, race technology sensors, sensors already on the engine, um, the GPS data. So that all goes up onto the internet. So to demonstrate that, so we have this system running here. And now I'm going to turn to the PC and going to log on to the uh, log on to our server. So I'm on our website at the moment. Um, there's a new link here for the RT Cloud. So if I click on there, I'm going to uh, log in as myself. So I'm going to find the password. Okay, so I'm just logging on to RT Cloud. Now already I've registered this unit onto my test account and I can show you that on here. So in fact we have three different units. Um, this is this unit. In addition uh, there's also another unit which is installed in a race car which is currently at Donington and there's also a third unit which is doing some test work for us in America. So the unit I have on my desk here is demo, that's the one I've selected. Um, and so now we're viewing a live feed from this unit. And to explain, so although this unit is on the bench in the office and we're transmitting over GSM, so that's going uh, over the GSM network, over the internet, and then back to this PC. So although this PC is very close to this unit, in fact, there could be any distance apart. So it could be the other side of the world, different country, on the pit wall, sitting in the office. It doesn't make any difference. All the information is live on the internet. And again, because uh, I'm just in this case, I'm using my PC, which is actually on a hardwired connection over the office. This could be a laptop with a GSM modem, it could be my mobile phone, 
or a tablet with a GSM connection. So any device which has internet access is able to access all this live data from the unit. Okay, so I've selected the, uh, the demo unit. Um, you can see the, the Google Maps, it's got the dot uh, sh showing over the office. So that's obviously from our, uh, from our uh, GPS antenna, which is on the roof there. Um, and it's not, uh, not very exciting, but I've got two dials at the bottom here. I've got water temperature and boost pressure. Well, on this test unit, I've not actually connected up the boost, but the water temperature, that's connected to our test box just down here. So if I turn, the, uh, turn this up and down, you can see the water temperature changing live. And I can also demonstrate sending a message from the internet back to the unit. So if I type in a message here, so if I type in pips now and click on send, then that message, let's hope you can see that on that screen there, that's displayed pip now. So the communication is two ways. So we're sending all the data from the unit, any combination of data, like as I said before, onto the internet, and also we can send messages from the internet back to the vehicle. So, assuming that the display is in front of the driver, it's a good way to communicate critical information. So, pit now would be a good example, or low on fuel, or engine problem would be examples of how that could be used. So, okay, that's a very straightforward example of the live telemetry. As well as that, it's been logging all this time. So, if I stop the unit logging, um, this is set up to manually start and stop. Um, there's, there's other options. In particular, the, the RT Live has accelerometers built in, so it detects movement. So in many cases, uh, you can set up the auto start and auto stop to be triggered by movement. So as soon as the car moves, it starts to accumulate data. Once the car's been stationary for a couple of minutes, it will stop logging data. So if we go to the Home tab on the, uh, on the RT Cloud interface, you can see that immediately that run's been uploaded. So if I just click on that particular run, so you can see it's from uh, the demo. Uh, it's nine minutes long, which was just the time it was logging on the bench there. No particular distance. Um, so if we click on that run, we get a bit more information about it. So it just says the start and end date on there. Um, you can see the start and end address was the office address, because obviously it's stationary here. And it's got a not very interesting track map which is effectively just a dot over the, uh, over the office there. Okay, so that's a very straightforward uh, benchtop example. Um, but if we, uh, if we go back to live data, I mentioned there was, two, there was a couple of units. One of those units is a car currently at Donington. So that's rather more interesting. So this telemetry is live from Donington. Um, as you can see, uh, now we've got a live track map of moving data. So uh, my colleague's just, uh, just going around the corner there. Um, the track map in this case, we set it up to uh, be colour coded by speed, but that could be any parameter. It could be oil pressure, it could be time slip to show how f um, far or behind he is on this particular lap. And we've also got some uh, more relevant real time information. So this is a turbo car and we're displaying boost pressure. So we're monitoring boost pressure remotely and we're also uh, monitoring the water temperature just to make sure there's no issues there. Um, there's a few other things to point out on this screen. So the, the system has live lap timing. And the way that works is when you turn the unit on, the RT Live unit tells our server where it is from the GPS location. And our server sends back the, uh, the location of the start end line for that particular circuit. And then that's used for lap timing on the unit. So in this case, uh, my colleague has done a 105, 105, 107 lap time and that will continue to store those lap times uh, and also looking over here we can set various alarms so we can set up to five alarms for any particular car. Um, now we do a lot of screw sneering work at race technology so alarms might be um, detecting over boost or an over RPM situation or alternatively um, you may be monitoring um, a car which you own but somebody else is driving so you might want to monitor um, uh, the RPM to make sure it hasn't been over speed because of a, a, a misgear change or monitoring uh, oil pressure to make sure it's above a minimum or water temperature to make sure it's not overheating or it could be um, other parameters like fuel level just to make sure there's sufficient fuel to finish the next few laps. So those alarms are fully configurable, there's five of them 
and as you can see you've got dots across for each each vehicle so this this account is actually set up with three units quite commonly it would just be set up with one unit for individual use or it could be a race team where there's three or four or it could be an entire race series we have 50 cars all registered to one account and all simultaneously uh, monitored so hopefully that's given you a quick introduction to the uh, what the system is capable of um, it's not a full explanation. I'm going to do a few more detailed videos on the website and also all the software and all the other capabilities. But hopefully that's a good introduction to the RT Live unit. And if you do have any questions, then please just call the office and we'd be delighted to help. Thanks very much.